Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over some of the concepts you need for CompTIA Security Plus, uh, the 701 version of the exam, the, one of the objectives under 1.2, um, and uh, you can go ahead and just look that up if you're not familiar with the exam objectives for Security Plus. So, some of the things we're going to cover in this video include the CIA triad, what's called triple A, so no, that's not the... Uh, the people that come on the side of the road and fix your car. Um, this is a different type of AAA. We'll also talk about non-repudiation. And we'll do a brief overview of gap analysis as well. So it's kind of weird how CompTIA has some of these things like wrapped into the same um, exam objective topic area, if you will. But we'll talk about all those things in this particular video. So again, CIA triad, which stands for confidentiality, integrity, and availability. We'll talk about non-repudiation. We'll talk about AAA. I'll talk about what all that is. We'll also talk about gap analysis, like I said. So let's just dive right in and talk about the CIA triad. So CIA triad stands for confidentiality, integrate, uh, integrity, and availability. So confidentiality, really with that, we're just making sure that the right people, the right applications, the right systems are getting access to the things that they're actually able to, you know, that, that they're authorized to like see, right? Whether that's data, et cetera. But preventing anything else from getting access to that, right? So the whole goal with that is to help protect sensitive data from unauthorized access, disclosure, or theft. Um, some ways we can do that in the real world are things like encryption, which is one of the most popular ways, um, using different types of access control methods, but also data classification. Because if we don't understand what we classify as sensitive, then how are we going to ever know how to protect it? Next up, we have integrity. So really, this is just focused on maintaining the accuracy and trustworthiness of data. So basically just making sure that the data hasn't been altered in any way. So ways we can do this are, uh, for example, hashing. So if you ever download like, um, for example, Kali Linux or something to play around and build your own home lab, a lot of times those software downloads will tell you what the hash is of the, of the actual download. So that way when you download something, you can compare the hash of it, make sure it's correct. If it's not correct, it could mean that that file was altered by somebody else, right? So potentially it's malicious. So that's what we can do with hash fun functions, also digital signatures, et cetera, and also version control can all be used to help us ensure that data integrity. And then finally we have availability. So availability is to make sure that people, systems, applications, et cetera, making sure that the resources that all those things need are accessible and usable when they need them. Um, a good example of this would be like, let's say you have a website and let's say Ken's a bad guy that day and I do a, what's called a DDoS attack or distributed denial of service attack against your website, which all that is, is, is uh, just think about it like a snowball fight. So let's say that you and I get in a snowball fight. I throw a snowball at you, you throw one at me. For the most part, you can handle that, right? Because I've got to make the snowball, then I've got to throw it. Now, let's say that I've got a hundred of my friends though, and we all throw snowballs at you. You're going to block a couple, but eventually, I mean, there's a hundred, hundred snowballs coming at you. You're going to get hit. You're probably going to get knocked down. You're going to get a bunch of snowballs in your face, right? And that's all a DDoS attack is. It's just people throwing a bunch of snowballs at you and overwhelming your web server. So your website goes down. So that's an example of availability. If someone does that, then your customers can't access your website. And maybe, maybe you've got an e-commerce business where that's the only way you can make money. So now you can't get any sales for your business because someone took down their website. So that's the availability aspect of it. So for example, with the example I gave, we would want to build protections against the DDoS attacks. So for example, using something like Cloudflare with your website. So there's like another check in place to make sure that someone can't just do a simple DDoS attack against your website. Also making sure that we don't have hardware failures, right? Or that we've built resiliency. So when you hear the terminology of cyber resili resiliency, if I can pronounce it correctly, that's what we're talking about, right? That's making sure that the organization has that availability across all those assets. Next up, we have non-repudiation. So if someone's like, hey, I didn't do that, non-repudiation is basically just making sure that we've got tracking in place to make sure that a user cannot deny the authenticity or integrity of a message they sent or some kind of transaction they have sent. So for example, if I, um, you know, let's say you send me an email and you say, Ken, you're a jackass and I go complain to HR. Non-repudiation, we mean that we've got tracking in place to prove that that email came from your system at the time that you would have been working, and maybe we have a security camera in the office as well that shows you were at the system while that email was sent. So really, yeah, maybe there was a bad hacker that broke in and did all this stuff, but we've got 
proof, honestly, that you did it, right? That you sent the email say Ken, saying Ken was a jackass. So the ways we can do non-repudiation include things like digital signatures, time stamping, of course, our audit logging, et cetera, et cetera, right? So just basically getting that proof in advance and making sure that, hey, this was the person or system or application that did the thing that we're thinking they did. So next up, we have AAA. Again, not the place it comes when your car is broke down. But this AAA is authentication, authorization, and accounting. What does it all mean? Are we talking about accounting and, and doing all the numbers and figuring out finances? No, we're talking about something else, right? So authentication is where we'll start. And that's basically just a process of verifying an identity of a user, a system, or application. So it's just basically confirming that identity, saying, okay, this person or system or application, et cetera, is who they, who they are or what they claim to be. And we can do this through various methods in cybersecurity world. So this could be like passwords using two-factor authentication, uh, security tokens, biometrics, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, authorization is the next one, and that's where we just determine what actions or resources that the, the authenticated user or system or application is allowed to access. So basically just making sure that, um, let's say, for example, that I'm a nurse, making sure that I got, I've got the appropriate permissions I need to actually chart on a patient after I take their vital signs. So ways, some ways we can do this are RBOC and ABOC. So RBOC just stands for role-based access control. ABOC just stands for attribute-based access control. Um, so role-based, in the example of a nurse, I could say, okay, all the nurses coming in the company get this level of access. And then I could say, from an attribute standpoint, I could say, based on the fact that, that this nurse works in Texas, I'm gonna give them a little more granular access based on where they work. So they can't access patient information from a patient over in Florida, for example. Um, you don't normally see that level of granular access in, in the nursing realm, um, but that's an example of how it might be used using RBOC and ABOC. There's also something called PBOC, which is policy-based access control. So again, we could just set a policy to automate giving that access. So a lot of things around access control, we're not going to dive into that stuff in this video, but again, those are some of the ways we can do the authorization part. Now, accounting is similar in the aspect of the financial stuff. It involves tracking, right? So, but in this example, we're tracking and recording the activities of authenticated users or systems or applications. So basically, we can get a record of who's access what, when, they, when did the access occur. Um, again, that's all related to the auditing process. And, and, and part of that is related to compliance, but also part of that is related to our incident response and our forensic analysis. So if we do have an incident, we can actually track back and say, okay, this is what happened. This is who or what access this stuff. And then finally, we've got gap analysis. If you're not familiar with gap analysis, basically it's just a process to assess the difference between our current state and the state we want to get to. So in the example of cybersecurity, we're analyzing our current state or our current of cybersecurity or our current security posture is what it's called. And where do we want to get to, right? What's kind of that gap that we have? You know, is that, do we have certain vulnerabilities or other weaknesses? Are there areas where we can improve? Guess what? Spoiler alert, there are always areas we can improve in security. So really what this allows us to do is, is get that analysis of like where our gaps are and how can we get better? You know, can we implement more security controls? Can we optimize, optimize uh, processes, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like what do we need to change to get better and better over time? So by understanding all of these concepts, so again, CIA TRIA, AAA, non-repudiation, non and gap analysis, um, all this stuff helps us as cybersecurity practitioners help our organization strengthen their cybersecurity posture and really just help them better protect their valuable assets, which could be a number of different things, right? And we're not just talking about um, the latest uh, Instagram post that we're trying to protect, right? Make sure that's not altered. We are honestly talking about human life at, in some instances, right? Um, earlier, I mentioned the example of a, a steamer, uh, a steam valve going off and, and killing someone, right? Um, and actually, that was in a previous video on the controls, I believe, security controls. But things like that actually could impact human life. So that's why this stuff is such a serious matter, and that's why it's important to understand it. So if you like these videos, though, let me know in the comments below if you like these videos that we do for certification prep, if it helps you at all. Um, that's the only way we know to do more of them, right, is, is by you telling us, hey, I like that stuff, please do more.